music for a game is very different from working with linear media like like films and so because uh, yeah, you can sit and compose a 50 second sequence that's you know works musically mm -hmm. but it has to react to the player actions. Because there's so strong thematics that we cover in this game, uh, it, it was so obvious that like we needed to use all audio as a vehicle to kind of like create an emotional connection with the player. Because without it, you basically are just wandering alone in a space where nothing is really touching you from the inside. The detail that goes into these games nowadays is just crazy, like our resonance system. So let's say there's this like glass surfaces and like every single time you, you use your skills, they kind of like rattle. And even even the, the, like the wooden table that's right next to you is going to have some sort of stress sounds because of the, the kinetic power being used very close proximity to these items. And it's, it's details like that that create the whole experience. One of the single most difficult aspects of the game was definitely to, to trying to kind of like uh, capture the core essence of the invisible threat that we have in this game called Hess. You don't know what it is, mm -hmm. you can relate to it, it kind of belongs to the physical world we already mm -hmm. know, but at the same time it's kind of distorted in some ways. It can be an environmental effect, it can be part of the gameplay loop, it can be part of the narrative exposition. Yeah, there's some, some kind of a sense of danger mm. going on all the time. It infiltrates so many areas of audio in this game, including music, actually. One of my earliest thoughts was to represent his by somehow distorting the tuning of the sounds or the harmonic overtones or whatnot. The main difference between our past games and this games was to just a kind of like a thematical change in terms of collaboration. Let's just create this like massive production library that everyone can be used. Yeah, well, of course we had like access to the same server, so we could always listen to each other's stuff yeah. and get inspired. You have basically the whole entire universe of control, you know, in the tip of your hands. Knowing what you have done, I've used that as a basis of what I have done. In a way, everything's a remix of a remix, so like all of our audio content that was meant to be used in combat stuff or environments ended up in composers' hands and all of their music content once was then again put into our library and we could further process and use it. I worked on the master enemy and mm. I stole some of your material and, oh, and, and twisted it and <laughs> yeah. Yeah, stuff like that. I shouldn't have said that. I'm going to have my revenge. <laughs> that kind of collaboration yielded like this very, very nice, rich universe for control. The guys here at Remedy is kind of creating a, a system that composes the music. This system seemed to work very well with the music system, which is also alternative in this game. It's like your composition gets decomposed and then recomposed mm -hmm. by the game. You are basically offering a huge bag of Legos mm, to the system yeah. and it sort of disassembles and assembles. We could create this like uh, seamless mesh of sound that could be uh, transformed from one emotion to another fluently. So you're not hearing any repetition, you're hearing something that's constantly renewing mm. and it's actually it's very interesting because it's doing it with the sounds you have provided mm. and there is a DNA of yours that's being altered by the machine. Everything's super smooth and we're like super proud of it. You, you don't see interactive music taken to that extreme. I, I'm having all my hand and neck hair standing up because I'm thinking of the possibilities of it all. It's really, really intriguing and interesting.